What's going on guys? This is Dean here with CRM AI and in this video I'm going to show you guys how to build um, a custom trained AI chatbot specifically in BotPress. A lot of you guys are asking for this um, and BotPress is a very very powerful tool. We've actually used it with one of our clients um, to develop a chatbot, chatbot for an e-commerce site. Um, again guys, uh, AI is not the only functionality that's incorporated into this. There's, there's a whole lot of um, other workflows which we're not going to get into but I did kind of want to show you the overall prem premise of this. Um, we're going to be building just a simple chatbot for um, another e-commerce site, Mudwater. Uh, if you guys saw from the last uh, page, we're just going to be feeding it essentially the FAQ um, so it can read this and, um, you know, essentially use this data to, um, you know, help answer any customers or potential customers related queries or questions they may have. Um, just as you normally would with other, um, you know, semantic retrieval systems that we've looked into. Again, we're just going to be doing it with BotPress here. So um, I definitely recommend you guys check out their documentation. There's a lot of juicy stuff in there. Definitely check it out. Kind of the, the different elements, tools, uh, workflows, hooks, etc. You, you'll kind of get it once we go through this more. But uh, once you guys create an account, you just want to create the chatbot here. And the first thing we're going to be prompted with is... Um, several options here so we can either um, you know we can either start from a blank document or from a template um, templates that other people have made or uh, we can start right away just by giving it a website link or um, documents that you've exported now I I will say that the um, the choice of answering it the choice of feeding data directly from websites from scraping and indexing doesn't work as well it gives you, you know, I got a lot of invalid URL requests when I tried um, choosing this. You can see here, if I just paste this in here in this help desk, it's just uh, gonna return me invalid URL. So I have just went ahead and um, just scraped this manually myself and exported it to a PDF. Um, so that's what we'll be uploading. Um, so we can just actually start here and answer questions on documents. We can go ahead and add uh, the documents drag and drop here so I've gone and added it here um, let's just go ahead and click confirm and again it's just gonna chunk it and um, embed it just as you normally would with any other uh, retrieval systems they've added this directly um, natively their knowledge base integration um, in their app and actually right away once we're prompted kind of in their interface and in their ID we can actually go ahead and chat with it right now so um, if we come back to their help desk we can ask it something like uh, you know where are you know where are your mushrooms from and then it should return us yeah they're grown in USA and we work with a producer in California so uh, pretty spot on with what we had here again guys this is nothing new um, but I just want to show you how easy it is to get up and started with something like this and if you guys come in the left hand side here uh, you can see that we're kind of in the main section here in the main environment here um, if we come into the i believe quick start knowledge we can see the document that we've embedded if you click on it it even shows you um, the different chunks that it's uh, created us i'm not sure where this logic is created but um, again guys if you've watched some of my other videos you can see that we're following the, essentially the same exact convention here um, so yeah, let's go back into our editor. Let's just go ahead and delete these for now. Um, we're just going to start fresh and we're going to create a new node. See, um, you can think of nodes kind of as like a step in the process. Um, each one can contain its own logic and um, typically they flow to other nodes. So for this first one, we'll just call it greetings and um, we'll drag kind of the start um, from there. Again, guys, I want this to be very basic. Um, just so you guys have an understanding of everything and um, once we add cards that's going to be your second most important thing like I said guys there's a few ways we could do this um, I'm just going to drag the single choice here for now and then uh, if you guys want to click this advanced configuration here and click choice we'll add two choices as we mentioned I'm a new customer and then an existing one as well um, and then based on what they select we're going to show them different options as I mentioned so um, 
for let's let's go ahead and start the existing customer first so i'm not going to get into any api logic but this is how we'd start it typically if we were to um follow our workflow here so we'd add something like existing customer and then um essentially um we can add a text text block here or a text card there oh we'll delete that there's two we'll say um you know let's help sorry we'll say let's help you find your order and then um we'll add we'll drag that from the existing customer there and then um we'll put an always and, th and this is an another expression so so what i've dragged here essentially is a expression card so I believe it defaults to always, but um, you can actually type your own conditions in here. Um, and then it would, you know, make the condition on its own uh, using AI, which is pretty cool. And it actually does this as well for the code uh, card that we're gonna look into. Um, but again, so from here, um, if they select our existing customer, they're gonna help them find their order. We'll create another new node. We'll do, we'll call it order lookup. Um, and again, guys, we're not actually going to complete this, but this is how something like this would look. So in this code block, we want to uh, collect data about the customer's order. Um, you know, obviously this will be specific to you, but uh, typically you'd want to collect the user's or the customer's email address as well as um, maybe an order number, uh, maybe a phone number, just typically two fields just to ensure that, um, you know, this is the real customer reaching out, um, kind of like a two-factor authentication, if you will. So um, in a right-hand modal here, um, you'll see the question to ask the user. We'll just ask it, um, we'll ask them what's the email address associated with your order. Um, and then we're actually going to save this in a variable. And typically, I didn't actually do this in the um, steps before this, but we want to store as many things and variables as we can just so we can access these later down from our workflows or if we're going to output this on a, um, you know, to a database or a spreadsheet, you know, the more data, the better. So get in the habit of that. So for, for example, something like this, we'll just call it customer email address. Uh, we'll save that there. And then we can do the same thing with um, number as well. So we can say you know, what's the order number associated with your order? And then we'll save that in another variable. We'll call it order number. Um, sorry, we'll follow the same convention, customer order number. You can see I've camel case it there. And then um, we'll just create another expression. For example, if we were to do this, that would go to another node and um, we'll just call it API call to, um, you know, backend. So obviously, you know, it depends where, uh, your orders are stored. So, or your, uh, you know, CRM management is stored. So something like Shopify, um, we, we would add, um, an execute code block. And then from here we would add the actual API call. Um, and again, guys, you can even, um, it can even generate you suggestions. So you can say like, create me a get request for um, an order, you know, um, you know, based on the following email address and order order confirmation number. Um, but again, guys, we're not gonna make any API calls, but that's how something would look like there. And if we actually drag this little um, menu bar here above in the right modal, we can actually go ahead and restart this. So we can say something like, hello. You can see we're gonna be prompted here with two choices. I'm a new customer, I'm an existing one. We'll go ahead and select existing customer. So it's gonna say, let's find your order number. What's the email address associated? So you'd say like, you know, dean at serum.ai. And then it should ask us for our um, order number. So we'd give it a number. And this could be a string depending on, um, you know, the way that all the data is structured. You'd have to build this uh, bespoke to your to your model and then again once we have these um, data fields collected we would go ahead and make the api call um, and then return that back to the user and then from there guys you can do obviously what you want for example 
if you want to um, you know build something to uh, return the customer's order you can do that or if you want to do um, you know you want to see where if the customer wants to see where the order is in transit you could build another API call another workflow that would use that data and um, you know look up where uh, where it is in transit with uh, UPS FedEx or um, whatever their API whatever the uh, shipping format is um, but again guys that, that, that'd be a pretty complex workflow we're not going to get into that so next we're going to create our standard node for the uh, new customer which is just going to be a semantic um, you know conversational chatbot using our um, the FAQ knowledge that we extracted from Mudwater if you guys remember uh, we uploaded it here which I'll show you guys how to incorporate um, into our simple workflow but we'll go ahead and create that standard node there we'll just call it um, I'll just call it knowledge base for now. And then for the card, we're going to select a, uh, we'll select raw input here. And then for the question, we're gonna ask the user and we'll say, from the previous step, I forgot to um, edit the question, ask the user, uh, the first step. So we can say, uh, for something like this in the greeting, we can say, welcome to mud water. I believe it's spelled like that. How can I help you today? And then um, again, they'll select I'm an existing customer or a new one. And then if they select a, um, we'll connect that here. If they select new one, if the question will ask, we'll say, what do you need help with? And then um, I should be good for now. And then if you guys um, click on the actual node, select it in the top or in the right modal, you'll see this little uh, toggle. Just toggle that on. You'll see a little bookmark icon there. Um, that's how you know that the knowledge base is enabled. And if you guys remember um, at the beginning of this video, that's where we uploaded that PDF. Um, so there's a few more things we need to do. Um, in the event that it doesn't know the answer, we want to create some type of like error handling. Grab this expression. Uh, flow logic here as one of the cards and then um, in the condition uh, remove always if it defaults to that and then in the condition you just want to add um, kind of this expression here so essentially what it's doing is if our knowledge agent doesn't respond um, you know then follow this workflow which will uh, create another node we'll just call this error here uh, pretty basic stuff here guys and then we'll just add a simple text card um, saying, sorry, could you please ask that again or something um, in the event it doesn't know. And then we're going to add a, another expression, I believe it should be always. And then we're just going to um, reroute this back to our knowledge base for now um, where um, they can ask another question and then lastly we're going to just add another expression here um, essentially just looping it back um, to itself just so we can quickly test this if you guys come up here um, start a new conversation we can say hello um, we're going to be presented with two options welcome to model water how can i help you today we do you want the existing route um, we'll say i'm a new customer um, and then we can ask it something so if we come back uh, we'll say, you know, can I trip on your products? <laughs> trip as in, you know, uh, like a psychedelic experience. And um, you can say, you can see it responded with mushrooms are not the kind that cause any psychedelic trips, you know. And then it get, essentially gets looped back um, to um, back to our original prompt or raw input. What do you need help with today? And we can just uh, keep asking questions. Now, obviously, guys, again, this is a very dumbed down version of this, uh, but more so I just wanted to show you the fundamentals of BotPress. Um, there's a whole lot you can do. Again, this is like barely just scratching the surface. If you guys want something more, uh, I guess, sophisticated, um, maybe going more in on the workflows of like existing users um, in the context of an e-commerce website, we can also um, explore that as well. If you guys are interested, let me know in the comments. So yeah, guys, if you have any questions, um, please leave it in the comments below or any video ideas. 
Um, I hope this was informative and you guys learned something from this. And if you're actually interested in getting your, um, you know, getting your chat bot um, or an AI powered application built by us or integrated by us, check out our website. You can schedule a call there. Um, we've actually done this for companies in a number of industries um, for about seven months now. Um, so yeah, guys, if you have any questions, reach us out through there. Um, I'll leave it down. Uh, I'll leave this down uh, below in the description. So thank you guys.